2002 Taiwan 49er Grand Prix was to be held in Taiwan's idyllic island chain of Ponghu, literally translated as Smooth Lake. An archipelago steeped in oriental mystique, it was only three years ago that some progressive thinking saw value in Ponghu's year-round warm steady winds and flat waters. It has since come to the attention of the international sailing community. Nice wind and flat water and perfect condition for a fob niner. In 2002, Ponghu welcomed the arrival of the world's top sailors to compete in the new elite Olympic sailing class, the 49er. Welcome the international teams from around the world to our islands for this great event. From its inception, the 49er pushed the boundaries of conventional design in almost every aspect and is deemed the world's most exciting and responsive sailboat. 49er, I guess, is the crash and burn um, Olympic class. Okay, the fundamental aspects of a 49er, the first thing you can see if you look at the back of the boat here, is how flat the boat is. It's just a big skimming dish. It isn't quite the normal Sunday afternoon boat. It's a boat that weighs 120 kilos and it does 50, 60 kilometers an hour, so that pretty much speaks for itself. The funny part about this boat is if you put it in the water with the sails up and the center board in, without any people in it, it will capsize. Whereas the boat finishes here, the wings finish here, which means you can get the crew that much further out, which is like giving the boat a bit of a turbocharge. Crazy boats, when you think about them, they have like 500 square feet of sail area and two people. You know, normally that's like a 30-foot keel boat with that much sail area. Well, the mast is very flexible. It automatically flexes to respond to each gust because the crew simply wouldn't be able to adjust the sails quickly enough to stop blowing over. You know, when it's windy, you're just you know, massively overpowered all the time, just trying to control the boat. As we move forward, you've got the two trapeze wires which the crews hang on. I guess the important thing when you talk about 49 or something is that the boat weighs 120 kilos and the two crew members weigh 150 kilos. Okay, then you have the self-tacking jib. This tack automatically flips across when you tack, which gives the crew that much more time to run from side to side. The jib is really the tool that they use to generate power. The uh, mainsail is a bit of the accelerator, so the more they can pull it on, the faster they go. And then finally, you have the spinnaker. And that's just like a big parachute which they put up when they go downwind. Upwind, nine knots of breeze. Yeah, can't beat a 49er. These things are just magic. The crews are at the midway stage of a four-year campaign to reach the 2004 Olympics, though only one crew from each country will actually reach the Athens Games. At the end of the day, one crew goes through to the Olympic Games, so we're always keeping an eye on how they're doing and how we're going compared to them. The Australians have uh, the strongest team. Vying for a second shot at Olympic glory is gold medalist Mark Turnbull, though there will be strong competition from down under. It's getting pretty tight and close, so it'll be interesting to see how we go. Neck and neck in the chase are the homegrown rivals McNichol and Harris, and one of the most established names in the business. We've got the three-time world champion Chris Nicholson here. Following world titles in 97, 98 and 99, Nicholson took an 18-month break from the 49er, though he's here in Taiwan to test his current form. We don't turn up the race anywhere unless we, unless we have the ability to win, so um, you know, we've, got, we've got just as good a chance to win here as anyone. We expect uh, some good breeze today, getting better tomorrow, and Sunday is supposed to be blowing about 30 knots, so it should be pretty good. The first two days would decide the qualifiers and rankings for the main event. In a moderate 6 to 8 knots, it was light wind specialists Kenji Nakamura and Masoto Takaki that were first to hit the windward mark. Next to shine was some nimble footwork from the Danish duo, the Hansen brothers, who managed back-to-back -back wins in races 3 and 4. Though as the day pushed on, it was the Kanagawa wind wizards that dominated the field, leaving Australian hopefuls languishing in their wake. As racing continued at dusk, a series of new faces came to the fore as the crews tuned themselves into the conditions. The American pairing of Wadlow and Spaulding were making ground, but it was the Southern Hemisphere rivals Nicholson and Boyd and Turnbull and Partridge that were turning heads as time after time they hit the upwind mark with barely a bow length between them.
The Aussies had made their move and closed the gap on the leaders to share second place, only two points off the top. Quite a good um, four races, so uh, happy with that. <laughs> Weather was nice, sunset, you can't get better than that. <laughs> Day two dawned and the wind filled in. The boat should really take off today. You'll see boat handling come to the fore. You'll see a lot of uh, capsizes, thrills and spills today. So some of the uh, not so seasoned crews will have a few problems out there. The Japanese had dominated in the light winds, though as the breeze picked up for day two, the heavier skiff crews were expected to come into their own. We're a little overweight at this regatta at the moment, so you know we should be we should be a little bit more competitive, I think. Uh, light wind is uh, I'm okay, but strong wind. Is... We need a more practice. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. In his first regatta with new crew member Gary Boyd, the three-time world champion was back on winning form as the yellow spinnaker of Nicholson took to the front time and time again. Their boat speed was unmatched all morning and had competitors scampering to retune their sails. At the moment you've got Chris Nicholson who's doing exactly the same thing I should stress. Um, simply giving them all the sailing lessons and uh, they're just trying to find you know, the golden answer to try and match his speed. As the afternoon session pressed on, it was Nicholson that schooled the field once more, taking seven out of the eight race wins. He had forgotten little in his time away and he and Boyd found themselves sitting on top of the leaderboard as they entered the main event. Chris is a breeze expert and Kept, you know, just kept coming at it, and whereas the others probably backed off a bit, he just kept going. He was pretty quick today, so uh, he had an awesome day. So, uh, yeah, just to hang on to the tail of him was uh, a good accomplishment. He's a rocket ship. I think uh, we got to work a little harder on the starting line and um, catch up with him, and yeah, we can take him down. What do you want to know? Come on, what is it you want to know? Mm. Julian Bethwaite's the Australian skiff guru who designed the 49er. He's an innovator. He's got the balls to try and do something different. 49er happened because a guy called Peter Johnson, who happened to be an American, and myself, he designed a boat called the J14 or Johnson 14. I designed a boat which was called the Exocet, and basically.